I am very struck by the theme of this dialogue and particularly a couple of key words there. The first is new. So my presentation will focus. Is it on? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, I can see it on as well as green. <laughs> We'll very much focus on, quote-unquote, the new aspects. And it somehow embodies in the term fusion, where there is a lot of light knowledge generated and less friction than, of course, natural wealth and management. I wish I could see this a little bit more because I didn't bring my um, <laughs> there's no screen in front um, if I were to speak like this can you hear me? that's better Now it's good. Usually when I speak, I need both hands, so, so okay. Hold the mic close to you, now. When I speak. No. This is not the... You want to go up? Yes. A number of speakers before me and many of you have been talking about sustainability. The word resilient has also been used. Is that better now, Jeff? Better. Yeah. Better now. Sitting right in front, you should be able to hear me. I can hear you. Too. You can hear me. We've also used the word inclusive, but I like to add the word equitable. A benefiting both stakeholders and shareholders. This requires inter- and intra-generational responsibility. When we come to talk about natural wealth and natural resources, experience have shown, indeed experience have shown in this part of the world for millennia that there must be community involved. Community involvement is very good. Bringing in traditional knowledge, traditional wisdom is excellent. We also need to bring in the science and technology. And that is where the fusion comes in. And then, of course, responsible management. Finally, what we need is the most important resource of all. It's human resources, developing human resources, so that people are more empowered and they have an opportunity to make informed choices. Traditional knowledge and practices from all regions of the world have a number of common features. For the past year, year and a half, I'm involved in a fairly major initiative which I think you should be hearing in the very near future. They can't hear me? No, you gotta be able to hold it up. Can I move that over here? I think if you just hold that microphone real close to you, it's like, Is that better? Yes. That's better. Whereby we bring in ancient culture and uh, modern science technology applications. But looking into ancient culture, we notice that in this part of the world, Asia Pacific, and goes beyond on Asia Pacific, way beyond even up to Syria, Iraq, etc. There are a number of common features. Most of these ancient cities in this part of the world are in dry hinterlands. You can name it from Syria 
all the way to China, and I've given some examples here, including in this country and into the Mekong countries. These are cities which have been inhabited and have thrived for two, three, four thousand years. They were all in hinterlands with very little water, with very little resources. But yet, every drop of water is used, is used efficiently, used effectively, and used socially responsible. Not one drop is wasted. And that goes for resources. And in these ancient cities, for millennium, culture, arts, sciences thrived and thrived very, very well. Forward is which one? On the right. The right. My right? Yeah. My, my left. That's right. So in looking at these, there are a number of common features that we can discern. First, these ancient cities thrive with very little resources and where great civilization and culture flourished because there was a harmony and balance of the ecological, social, and cultural systems. There is an understanding and respect of so-called the outer limits of both the natural system and the celestial system. They are socially responsible. They are culturally sensitive and respectful. They are economically viable. They use indigenous knowledge and materials scientifically and technologically sound. We need to draw upon traditional knowledge, traditional wisdom, that's where community comes in, and through fusion, integrate state of art, science, state of the art of science and technological and management practices. Through that, we can hopefully take the lead, take the pathways towards transformational, a transformational paradigm beyond the business as usual and making a paradigm change. Later on, I will end up by saying more of the same is good, but it is not enough. Band A may help a little, but it's not good enough. There got to be a fundamental paradigm change. If there is no paradigm change, we are going to go beyond a tipping point. And with this paradigm change, there are indeed tremendous opportunities. And these are the emerging opportunities for increasing natural wealth. You have seen this condensa chart since the 1960s that appeared in Nature and it's been shown again and again and again and showed that looking at the total wealth, quote unquote, compared with what can generate from GNP, GDP, from the natural wealth, it much, much more. It's about 33, 32 to 33 billion dollars. But in reality, the figure, many are saying, should be around about the 55 trillion, trillion dollars range. So what are the responses? You'll hear me say here and in many fora, but business as usual is good but not good enough. There's got to be a revolution. Revolution. Three revolutions. Carbon revolution, resource revolution, behavioral revolution, if we are going to move further and faster towards a sustainable, resilient, inclusive, and then an equitable society that will also address climate change challenges. First, the carbon revolution. McKinsey, 
many other studies now are increasingly calling for a carbon revolution. In this report of McKinsey, and the Stearns report more or less touched upon that, that within the next 30 to 40 years, there have got to be a 10 times increase in carbon productivity, 10 times. It can be done. To look at the challenges and the opportunity, it took the United States 120 to 130 years to increase labor productivity by 10 times. But we need to improve and increase carbon productivity by 10 times in less than 40 years. But it can be done. It can be done. Every year we delay costs us half a trillion dollars more, according to IAEA, etc., etc. reports. We have the technology. We have past wisdom. What is needed is the political will, both from the private sector and the public sector, a political will. Resource revolution, again McKinsey and many other people are saying that just by improving the efficiency throughout the material life cycle, and material and energy are very, very closely interrelated, about a third of the world resources need can be readily met. Today, as I was Looking at my email, there was a headline news in the New York Times which says Mayor Bloomberg is going to announce a major food recycling program in the United States. A lot of food has been wasted, a lot of money and energy has been used is in order to re recycle this food. He's going to have a program to recycle the food. Then in the material, revolution. The most exciting at the moment is biomimicry, to mimic nature. Just look at nature. Nature is the, work, is the most efficient and effective process, mechanism that we have in turning sunlight, material, etc. into food and energy. And we are beginning to learn more and more and more in two of the institutions in Long Island I'm closely involved in, we are looking into many of these biomimicry the, uh, innovations that it's coming, coming through, and biomimicry materials. Two weeks ago, I visited one of the small advanced research laboratory in Up Island, New York, and what they are doing they blows my mind off. But I am encouraging my colleagues to go even one step further. Always you will hear me talking about revolution. Always you'll hear me using the word beyond. We should never be content with the status quo. We must always take the next step beyond and beyond. Biomimicry has served as well. We need to go beyond that, and that is eco-mimicry. It's not only mimicking the biological system, but mimicking the whole of the ecological system. Behavioral revolution. We need to change all the time. Excuse me, I hope Landmark is here. Or somebody from Landmark. Why are the lights at that part of the room on? Can somebody give me a good reason why? It should be on. No good reason. It's bad behavior. It's bad technology. Mm -hmm. We should switch it off. <laughs> Incandescent bulb. Have we not heard about CFL? Have we not heard about the LED? That can come down to five watts giving the same energy? We gotta change. We gotta change this. So there's got to be an increase in awareness. 
in the United States, the interagencies came up with a figure of about 25 tons, the social cost of carbon. Stockholm Environment Institute and a group of about 100 uh, resource economists came up with a very thoughtful research paper which shows that the real cost of the social cost, the real cost of carbon is much, much more than 25. It's around about 850. If you take into the health aspects, it's over 1,000. Then we know about the economic incentives and what normative tools can make. Mobilizing technology. The using intelligent systems, smart systems, using social networking will clearly drives of a behavioral change. So, to sum it up, the new opportunities, new for natural wealth management, is the convergence of carbon, material, and behavioral. Not each separately, but the convergence of the three to form a mega revolution. And the mega revolution is nothing new. It's revisiting the natural evolution, which has been going on for six billion years. So opportunities are improving efficiency and conservation, the low hanging fruit. I miss when I was going through about carbon, the imperative to do it, the urgency of now, on the 11th of May, you all may have read it, that the United States NOAA Observatory in Hawaii, Manolau, for the first time in three million years, first time, three million years, recorded CO2 concentration at more than 400 parts per million. These are facts. Nothing to do with politics, whether I'm left or center or right or center or whatever it is. 400 parts per million in 3 million years. If this is not a wake up call, then what it is? Energy capture and harvesting. I have three colleagues working that all the energy that is produced here, we will be able to capture them and reuse them. Understanding photosynthesis better, I see you. No need, you can keep your hands down, because the more you do that, the more you distract me, and I won't be able to finish it, okay? So I want to finish it, so I don't want to, I will respect that, okay? We need to understand photosynthesis better. And lots of exciting things are happening. Improving the knowledge of the biochemical, electro, electrical, interactions for transformative new renewable energy and not just any type of materials but the new and exciting type types of composite material. Here are the new opportunities and looking into how new wealth could be managed and new wealth could be created. Thank you very much.